Hello and welcome to India Market Open. It's bright and sunny in Mumbai. The implied Nifty is indicating to a flat start. Global queues are okay, but in another failed attempt by Hindenburg guys this weekend to maliciously attack India mm. and through none other than the highest share of the SEBI. I'm calling it failed because I think the conspirators have gone all out, but so has the country. It's taken a united stand. Yeah, and, and you know, uh, as it should, per se, uh, part one and part two, just the point-by-point -point rebuttal that have been made by various people on social media, on our show yesterday evening, etc., with regards to most of the points that have been made in the letter now. You know, uh, uh, it's very difficult, you know, I must say, for people to give a point-by-point -point rebuttal on such a large letter in a matter of 24 hours, but I think some of the points that have been called out uh, or downright silly to be honest yeah. and I think that's why uh, the markets are probably not showing any kind of a reaction uh, at all. For good None reason. So, for yeah. good reason. So, so I think uh, what became very clear and if you look at uh, the SEBI statement, there were two sets of statements from uh, Madhvi and Dhaval Butch in their personal capacity but yeah. the SEBI statement at the end of the evening becomes very important because if you see the second paragraph of that statement it says that investors should keep in mind that Hindenburg has taken short positions exactly. basically this is not out of some goodwill to say uh, you know India. highlight <laughs> what is happening in or the investors Indian or or market yeah. or this is they're making money they've taken short positions and then they're going ahead and trying to create a situation where those short positions turn profitable that's essential Actually, what and is that happening? that would be very interesting today, right? Because if you have the system at whole in support of what the country stands for, what our governance stands for, what regulation stands for, because this is not just any other person. This is the highest share of the most important regulatory body in any country, right? Yes. What would be interesting to see is, of course, and this is uh, ex-school or ex-university, like people call it, that there are talks that there have been sh uh, puts being bought on MSCI India. Yeah. If that is true by by any case or by any imagination, I would imagine all those hands will do whatever it takes to get these guys out and there could potentially be a big short squeeze coming away. You know, at the end of the day, and this is the beauty of uh, markets and investors yeah. and the collective wisdom which Neeraj keeps calling Mr. Market, is that people, when they are putting in an investment, don't look at their ideologies, their politics, what they feel about the it's company. They well. look at the facts. And, and today, I, we'll wait and see what Indian investors do. What is also really unfair is that in the middle of all of this, whatever conspiracies they may be, who gets squeezed? It is the Indian retail mm. investor. So let's... So, let's, so no reaction will be happens. the biggest reaction. No re yeah, so my, my limited view out here is that there might not be a reaction. So, you know, most people have said that they've been waiting for reasons for the markets to come off, stocks to become better valued so that they can buy because some of the results have frankly been fantastic. We'll talk about yes. some of them today as well. Yeah. So most people are waiting for a dip. So in, in some sense, the, the slightly mischievous wine was, hey, if this brings a reaction, I'll be very happy because there are a lot of stocks I want to buy. I'm sitting on the cash and I want to buy. But they admitted that just the nature of the allegations made doesn't seem like it will bring about any kind of a reaction yeah. despite the fact that it's an attack against somebody who stands for integrity, right? And it's an attack against her mm -hmm. in a personal in capacity, capacity, right? So therefore, they say that despite the nature of the attack, they do not believe that the investing fraternity yeah. will get nervous. And it's that. almost emotional, right? So forget, forget market participants, forget industry. Even the common man who's pervy to this and is up to speed with it. So of course, on Saturday night, I was out and everyone was sympathizing they're like oh this is not right so without even knowing the complete picture which yeah. of course rolled out on sunday the fact remains is that we stand united as a country and i think that's what's commendable about so, us so apart from sentiment and emotion we need to get into what the facts say and that's very very important because we're not just <coughs> making claims right when we're saying that the hindenburg hit job has uh, been completely punctured what is the reason for that so vishwanath nair joins in and he and I were covering the story yesterday as well. Uh, Vishy, let me just start with the SEBI statement which came in and that was the official statement, right? So, so, so that's important. And SEBI, and I know Madhvi Puri Boch is the chairperson, but SEBI as an organization has come out and essentially said that we have all the disclosures which were required, isn't it? 
So on Sunday, uh, Dhawal and Madhavi Puribuch issued two separate statements. Well, the first one uh, was a briefer statement sort of refuting the allegations uh, made by Hindenburg Research uh, in their latest note to investors. And the second one was far more detailed uh, with information about both uh, of their uh, professional careers, how they have uh, progressed over time, their investments, and whether there were adequate uh, decision dis uh, disclosures that were being made by both uh, Dhawal as well as Madhavi Puribuch. Uh, and this information essentially is, uh, is in, intended uh, to refute any of the allegations. Now, one of the statements that probably popped out, uh, which was at the end of the statement, uh, was that uh, Hindenburg Research is yet uh, to respond to SEBI's show cause notice, which was issued in January, uh, which was issued in June, apologies, uh, where uh, this uh, details were sought from Hindenburg Research about how they proceeded with the short sell uh, against the Adani group uh, when they issued their short sell note in January of 2023. Uh, now, remember that SEBI at that point in time had issued a show cause notice in June uh, where they had claimed that uh, Hindenburg Research had colluded with a, a bunch of other market participants, uh, specifically uh, the uh, K India Opportunities Fund, which is a Kotak Mahindra owned uh, fund, uh, as well as uh, Kingdom Capital, which is owned by short seller uh, and hedge fund manager Mark Kingdon. Uh, so this, through this collusion, uh, they had made about four million worth of uh, uh, worth of earnings uh, by shorting Adani Group shares. This is I'm specifically talking about Hindenburg Research. Uh, uh, what, uh, the, what Hindenburg has raised are multiple issues of potential conflict of interest. However, they have not provided clear details of any direct linkages uh, between Madhavi Puri Boj as well as the Adani group uh, in their past dealings. Okay, so so this was the statement coming in from SEBI as well. So now we've been talking about for the last few minutes about why this latest hit job attempt by Hindenburg hasn't really worked. And why am I saying that? Why are we saying that? So let me just put that into the facts and two sets of statements, one from Madhvi and Dhawal Butch and the other from 360 Wham, which was then IIFL, which ran the fund that Madhvi and Dhawal Butch invested into. So look at those two statements together and this gives you a clear picture. They puncture the claims completely. Why is that? First of all, this couple, the when they invested in the IPE plus fund, and that's the core contention, right, that this was a fund that they invested in, which Hindenburg claims has some, um, some kind of links to their initial allegations against Adani. But those investments were in 2015, two years before Madhvi had anything to do with SEBI. So number one, that timeline doesn't fit. Second point is that this fund has more than 90% plus of its allocations in debt. Um, between Madhvi and Dhawal Bush, they had 1.5% of the fund. So in no way could they have any say in where this fund invested. And that again is the crux of the allegation. So I'm taking Hindenburg's own allegations and displaying how frankly they're making no sense, which is why there's nothing really to back their claim that there is a link between Madhvi's actions as an investor in 2015 and what she's done as SEBI chair today. If there was any benefit that they're claiming came to Madhvi and Dhawal Butch through this fund, it clearly didn't because when they sold it, they didn't even make any profits from it. So really, where is that beneficial link at all? Hindenburg is also making it clear, and if you look at their statement, they make it clear with their standard disclosure that they have taken short positions. They say anyone reading this should assume that we have taken short positions on the companies that we're talking about. That's their standard disclosure. This is something Sebi points out as well. So they've made it very clear that they're in this to take short positions and make money. And remember, Sebi has backed Madhvi Bush, says all disclosures and compliances were made. Um, her consulting <laughs> firms, now this is the important part, and you know, if anyone has a view on this, the only question mark, if any, that could be asked is why did a SEBI chairperson have consulting firms? They came out and they declared yesterday that those are completely dormant. dormant. So she shut all her activities as a private citizen. And if anyone has seen her career, she's been doing this for 30 odd years, has worked with some of the largest private entities in her own capacity. Exactly. And you know, we were having this conversation yesterday, Neeraj and Samina, that if you want very qualified private um, uh, you know, professionals to come in and take positions like SEBI chairperson, which don't frankly pay as much as the private sector does. It comes with a lot of work. They have to do it because they care for the country and the capital markets, exactly. right? You don't do it for the money. Why would you do it if your actions as a private citizen are being questioned? 